Are you considering getting an implant overdenture to replace your loose denture? Do you know that there are two different styles of implant overdentures? No? Well, I'm glad you clicked on this video. In this video, I'm going to compare the two different types of implant overdentures and tell you the pros and cons of each style. And hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a better idea of which option is the best for you. Hi dental fans, I'm Dr. Rich, a general dentist with over 20 years of experience. I'm teaching you about dentistry and teeth so that you can have a very nice smile. Please subscribe to watch my weekly dental videos. In my other video, what is an overdenture, I described the two styles of overdentures that are available. I'll leave a link to that video up here and down in the description. In this video, I'm going to go more in depth and discuss the pros and cons of each style of overdenture. The two different styles are implant retained overdentures, which means the implants hold in the overdenture, and implant supported overdentures, which means the implants hold up the overdentures. I'm going to compare the two styles based on four categories. Category one, chewing function and comfort. Category two, at home cleaning. Category three, maintenance and repair. And finally, category four, cost. Category one, chewing function and comfort. Since the implant supported overdenture is held up by the implants and not by your gums, you can bite with more force than you can with an implant retained overdenture. Also, it will not move around at all. And because it's supported by a metal bar, the denture part of it can be made much smaller. It only needs to be big enough to cover the bar and seal it to the gums so food doesn't get under it. The downside is you need enough implants to support the bar, usually at least four implants. And some people need to have their jawbones shaved down so that there is enough room for the metal bar under the overdenture. The implant retained overdenture transmits biting force to your gums like a regular denture does, so you won't be able to bite with as much force. Now don't get me wrong, you can chew much better than you can with a regular denture, but there will always be a little give in an implant retained overdenture. The overdenture also needs to be big enough to transfer the biting forces to your gums. For an upper overdenture, I can remove the roof of the mouth part of the denture, but I can't make it as small as I can make the implant supported overdenture. On the plus side, since the implants are only holding the denture in, you don't need as many of them, especially in your lower jaw. Most times, two implants are enough to make a huge difference. Also, because the posts and snaps are fairly small, you most likely won't need to have your jawbone shaved down. Category two, at home cleaning. Since both types of overdentures are removable, you can clean them with a toothbrush and some dish soap from your, in your bathroom. Then soak them overnight in some denture cleaner. The difference is how you clean the implant parts in your mouth. The implant retained overdenture only has these little gold posts which stick up through your gums. Those are pretty easy to keep clean with a toothbrush. The implant supported overdenture has a metal bar that is attached to your implants. You have to clean the metal bar with a toothbrush and you have to use either super floss, a floss threader, or an inner proximal brush to clean underneath the metal bar. I'll leave a link here and down in the description to my how-to videos so you can see how to use super floss, a floss threader, and an inner proximal brush. You don't have to worry about getting a cavity, but you have to keep the area under the bar and around the implants clean to avoid gum disease, which could lead to implant failure. Category three, maintenance and repair. In this category, both types of overdentures will have similar issues over time. The main issue is the plastic snaps that hold the overdentures will wear out and loosen up over time. It is usually a simple job to replace the snaps. The implant retained overdenture is more likely to need more frequent replacement of the snaps since it can move a tiny bit more than the implant supported overdenture. The metal posts onto which the snaps fit may need to be replaced if they wear out. 
Both types of overdenture may need to have denture teeth repaired if they break off. And with either type of overdenture, when you go to brush them, please spread a towel out on your bathroom counter and brush the denture over that. I've seen too many cases of people dropping their dentures while they are cleaning them. And they break off pieces of the denture when it hits the hard countertop, the sink, or the floor. The implant retained over denture will also need a reline after a few years when your jaw bone shrinks, just like a regular denture would. If after a few years you need to have a new over denture made, making a new implant retained over denture is fairly straightforward. Making a new implant supported over denture is a bit more difficult and sometimes the metal bar needs to be removed from the implants and sent to the lab so that they can use it to make a new overdenture. Category four, cost. An implant retained overdenture will be less expensive than an implant supported overdenture. For one, you will need fewer implants. A lower implant retained overdenture will work with just two implants. Four would be better, but not required. An upper implant retained overdenture, not covering the roof of your mouth, needs four implants. So six implants for the entire mouth is the minimum. An implant supported overdenture requires at least four implants. Most dentists and oral surgeons will feel better with five implants, just in case one implant fails in the future. So eight implants for the entire mouth is the absolute minimum. In my area, implants cost about $2,000 each. So the implant retained over denture is four to $8,000 less expensive just due to the implant costs. The overdenture cost is roughly the same, except the implant supported over denture also needs to have a metal bar made that fits onto the implants. This adds about $5,000 to the cost. So an implant supported over denture will cost roughly around $9,000 more than an implant retained over denture. So to sum things up, in category one, chewing function and comfort, the implant supported overdenture has the advantage. In category two, at home cleaning, the implant retained overdenture has the advantage. Most people I treat don't love the idea of having to floss again. Most have lost their teeth due to not flossing well. Category three, maintenance and repair is a tie. With possibly implant retained overdentures needing more adjustments and snap changes in the beginning, but implant supported overdentures have a higher replacement cost compared to an implant retained overdenture. In category four, cost, the implant retained overdenture is much less expensive than an implant supported overdenture. In my office, the most popular option for patients who are missing all their teeth is a regular upper denture on top and two implants and an implant retained overdenture on the bottom. This combination provides great chewing function and the cost is more economical. The next most popular option is an implant retained overdenture on top with four implants. This way the overdenture doesn't cover the roof of the mouth and that's usually paired with a lower implant retained overdenture on two implants. So tell me, what kind of overdenture do you have or what would you like to have? Do you have any questions about overdentures? Please leave me a comment below. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.